In this presentation, we will record the journal entry for the issuance of a bond at par value. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We've got the information on the left. We're going to record that into our general journal and then post it to a worksheet on the right to see the effect on the accounting equation and individual accounts. We can see that we have in our worksheet the trial balance, which is going to be in order assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expense. Assets in green, liabilities in orange, equity in light blue, and income and expense in dark blue. The debits being represented with non bracketed numbers, the credits with bracketed numbers debits minus the credits equaling zero net income is currently at the 700,000 which is sales and then no expenses at this time so we're going to issue the bond here this is going to be the, the most basic format of issuing a bond and that's going to be where the market rate is equal to the stated rate if you see this in terms of a book problem uh it, they may just give you the the amount that you're going to issue the bond for and tell you that we're going to issue it for the, the face amount of the bond or they might indicate that it's going to be issued uh, because the interest rate is the same as the market rate so in other words our, our issue here in terms of our data we issued a bond which pay interest semi-annually it's a 15-year bond paying semi-annual the face amount is 240 issue price 240 the interest rate on the bond is eight percent as well as the market rate what this means, of course, is that we're going to issue it for the same amount that we're going to be paying back at the end of the bond term. In other words, it's going to be very similar to just a normal loan type of transaction, meaning a normal loan, what happens is we're going to get, uh, we're going to get money today, in this case, 240000 We're going to pay back at the end of the loan period, the 240000 plus we're going to pay back kind of the rent on using that money, that being the interest, at this time, 8%. Why then do we need to say that there's two, a face amount and the issue price, and what's the deal with these interest rates? Note that the, the bond is a little bit different than a normal, uh, a, a note in that if it's pre-written, we could still negotiate sometime in the future. And, and if we do so, the market rate could differ from the bond rate. So if, if a problem says that the market rate is different than the bond rate, that will most likely result in us issuing it for some amount other than the face amount. So they could indicate that by saying that the market rate and, and the uh, stated rate on the bond are different and, they, and or they could just tell you because they may not be able to, they may not want you to calculate what that difference is and therefore we'll have to just basically tell you how much we're going to get for the bond and the face amount of the bond. So we'll talk about how to, how to calculate the price later. Right now, if we just record this, then pretty basic type of journal entry, we're just going to say, is cash affected? We're going to say yes cash is uh, going up that's why we're issuing the bond we're the ones selling the bond cash has a debit balance we're going to increase it by doing the same thing to it another debit so i'm going to right click in g3 right click and copy we'll put that up top in c3 right click and paste one two three just the values i'm not going to paste the cell make it green you could obviously type it in there that would be okay here we're going to get 240,000. And then we're going to credit something. It's going to be for the same amount. There's only going to be two accounts in this journal entry. So I'm going to do that with a little formula negative of that number. I'm just going to take that number and flip the sign. You could type in a negative 240. And then that's going to be going to bonds payable. That's what we're going to owe with liability account. So I'm going to copy bonds payable, right click in G6, copy. We'll put that in C4, right click and paste one, two, three going to indent go into the home tab alignment increase indenting and there's our journal entry the, the idea here is that there's no premium or discount because one they told us that the two are going to be the same and two because the, the stated price is equal to the market price also note that it can be confusing that just having the interest just like any kind of note problem it's we see the interest rate and we 
possibly think, well, I have to do something with the interest rate. Why would I need it here? And note that we don't really need it at this point because they're the same and we'll calculate interest once time passes. So at this point in time, because there's no premium or discount, the interest rate doesn't do anything for us. We will need it, but not until time passes to calculate how much interest will be paid and how much interest has been incurred in terms of an expense. So if we post this then, we've got the cash first. Cash is our first account. We're gonna go on the middle column in I3. We will say equals, point to that 240,000, making the 270 go up by 242. 960,000, bringing us out of balance by that 240 until we record the bond payable, which we will do here. We're gonna be in the middle column in cell I6, where we say equals, point to the 240,000, bringing that zero balance up by 240 to 240, bringing us back in balance here. So note what, was hap what happens here, of course, is we've got cash. Cash is gonna increase, and we increase the liability. No effect on the income statement. We got cash, but we didn't earn revenue. We owe it back in the future. And of course, no expenses, net income remaining the same.